welcome back to In The Know. We're talking about reflexology to go today, and Linda Gooch is our special guest. We've got a call from Julie in Markham. Hi, Julie. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good. Do you have a question for Linda? I did. I, um, I'm experiencing plantar flatulitis, and I was wondering if there's any tips or techniques or things that Linda could suggest uh, to help in the recovery. I feel for you. I feel for you, Julie. That, I've had well, that. That's a huge subject. I think anybody that's active, a lot of walking, uh, it's common in runners, mm -hmm. dancers. Mm -hmm. And so um, a good tip, actually we just talked about it, is the ice and the breakaway ice packs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but also what happens is you have two arches, right? A transverse arch and the, uh, the vertical arch. Mm -hmm. and, and it creates a space and it, it actually pulls open and the body says, I better fill it in. And it doesn't do a great job. And so that's why, you know, Julie's probably feeling stone-like pebbles, like you're walking mm -hmm. on something. So with that being the case, um, there are some taping techniques that can give you an extra set of skin that helps to rest the foot. I mean, you know, Julie, the best thing is rest when you do have plantar fasciitis, which is almost impossible to do because we're on our feet constantly. Mm -hmm. But one of the best tips I can give you is first thing in the morning, right before you get out of bed, is to ice your feet for as long as you can stand it, you know, five to ten minutes and work your way up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the same before you go to bed at night. And that contracting of the blood vessels really does um, stimulate the healing process and also uh, the inflammation, the redness that you, you get with plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. But rest is rest and repair is, is key with that one. Thank you so much, Julie. Good luck Thank with you. that. Would you massage out a plantar fasciitis? Can you use a, your golf balls or anything else? You, um, you can break down the calcium deposits. Mm -hmm. It's painful. So it's better to prevent it <laughs> from right. happening. But yes, you can break it down. I've used the edge of my stairs. That's right. You you can <laughs> you can you can break it down and you can you you massage it, but you really need to take your time with it. It's um, one of those conditions that takes a very long time to get better, and and still the the best way to do with that is to rest it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we wanted to move into our feet, and that's a perfect segue, mm -hmm. Julie. Thank you, because they say the eyes are the key to the soul, but our feet really they are. control our whole body. Or not so much control, but are indicative of what's going on in our body, and we're on them all day long, as you mentioned. How important are, you know, is proper footwear, maintenance, preventive care on your feet? Well, think about it. Where, where do you go without them, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're with you all the time. You really need to respect those tootsies, I say. And, um, you know, right down to hygiene. Mm -hmm. We perspire. You change a shirt, right? The same with our feet. People forget that you really should change up your shoes. You should change up your socks, like, throughout the day, especially if you're active and you're on your feet, mm -hmm. if you have a job where you're standing all day. Um, specifically change up those shoes you get hot spots and frictions and so all of these things happen and when you walk you use different muscles mm -hmm. different muscle groups so to change your shoes is really actually good therapy for your feet and your overall body maintenance so if in Julie's case with the plantar fasciitis should she be wearing a running shoe she should wear um, a comfortable shoe that distributes her weight okay right that that isn't stressing any one spot particularly in the arch or in the heel where it pulls down mm -hmm. into the heel where the meets the Achilles but to change up shoes is very important for for anybody okay, whether right. they have plantar fasciitis or a neuroma or any other foot condition wow okay and speaking of running shoes just a personal story years ago um, we did a, a Rogers TV run actually okay. and I went to buy my first pair of running shoes and I didn't know the science behind purchasing the proper pair of running shoes because there's so many different types and I pronate my feet a little bit okay. so I needed the proper shoe to you know make sure that I wasn't going to hurt my ankle and then all of those tendons that are on that side of your body well that's right and that's why they have I mean in a lot of the the sports shops they have specialists that will help you pick the right shoe you know, cross-training is different than running. 
is different than walking, mm -hmm. is different than jumping. My son was a track and field decathlete, so if you can imagine, he had shoes for everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank God he's growing now. <laughs> yeah, so, so take care of them basically. Yeah. And so foot odor, you've got a pretty funny picture of a cat. I love this. Um, and why is foot odor a, a warning sign or a, a trigger? It, because you perspire, and if you perspire um, profusely, that's usually a sign that the body's talking to you, mm -hmm. right? Now, why, are, why is some foot odor worse than others? I mean, it's all about your bacteria, and when we perspire, the bacteria eats the perspiration, which causes the odor. So it's important to, uh, you know, to keep those feet healthy. Okay, you mentioned yeah. uh, neuroma, Morton's neuroma, what is that? Neuroma is like, uh, we'll call it a bubble on the nerve. When you, you have nerves that run the length right throughout. Uh -huh. And sometimes it pinches in between the bones. And so Morton's is, uh, refers to like Morton's toe when the, when the first toe is longer than the big toe, mm -hmm. right? That's called a Morton's toe. And in the ball of the foot area, right, is where our main nerves are and we're walking on the balls of the feet mm -hmm. all the time. And when this gets pinched off, sometimes shoes that are too tight, it pinches off the nerves. They're very, very painful. Um, ice, again, is, is good for it, mm -hmm. but really you need to uh, get a wider shoe and be well aware. It's more common, um, I would say, in like skiers who are in the tight boots mm -hmm. and also uh, women wearing the pointy toes. The looky good shoes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I would think dancers too. Dancers for sure. We're, yeah. We're torturous on our feet. Absolutely. Our feet. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to obviously talk some more about reflexology. We've also got a call from Linda in Aurora on the line. Thank you for being so patient with us. Stay on the line. We'll get to you right on the other side of the break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 